Ah, mm-hmm. Yes, we are live. I'm pumped up. I get to spend some time with the Scribe Tribe. Thank you so much. I got the mic. Hopefully you can hear me well. And uh, we're talking about why no one can verify. Why was people, I'm getting all these sorts of emails from people. Why people, like, hey man, my hair, okay. I see y'all You're looking at my hair, okay. I've been busy, been hustling, working hard, trying to get these deletions for people, trying to get things squared away for everybody's credit. So, you know, I got to get my hair squared away later, okay. Also, because Jerome ain't be doing no camera properly, so I have to do all my camera work, okay? So I'm just fooling around while we get some live people in. We're getting some live people. Jimmy Hill, good morning. He says good morning. If you're watching the replay and you're wondering why I'm fooling around, beginning because we're waiting for people to trickle in, okay? Hey, Jessica Carter, we've been exchanging emails. Jessica's been doing really well. Score's coming up. Her husband's score's coming up, so I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> made it to the live stream. Good morning, Brian. JM, JM, 6974. Good morning. Christopher Walker. How you doing, Mr. Walker? I'm doing very well. West Brooks is back, Jerry. West Brooks. I know it says West Brooks, but I know his name is West Brooks. Mr. West Brooks, uh, what's up to you as well? Thank you for coming and thank you for spending your Saturday, either morning or afternoon or, you know, different time zones. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Now, Harriet smiles. Great to great to have you live. Thank you. Ah, Thomas Rogers finally made it to the live broadcast. I appreciate you coming. I don't want to take up all your Saturday, sucking up all your weekend, right? But uh, I want to make sure that I get some good content out for you guys. So, had some emails. Uh, you stay blessed as well, Melly Mel. I appreciate you. So we got some uh, subscribe chat members in here. We got some thumbs up. Thank you so much. So if you're watching this replay, let me get right into it for you. And if you're live here, um, you can go ahead and ask some of your questions. You have missed, you have not missed very much. We've only been on live for about two minutes. So y'all coming in strong. We're doing great. We're doing great. So I wanted to share this with you. And uh, we got an email from one of the subscribe tribe members. And we have another individual said the first time. So anyone's first time, thank you. And if you're coming back, thank you so much. Uh, it's a couple of first times. So thank you so much. So I like to start things off positively where you can go, what you can get to. Okay. Got an email. They just got a response back from the credit reporting agencies, the CRA. So that's when we saw CRA. You see CRA, credit reporting agencies, credit bureaus, the three major ones, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. From our first round of letters, and he already got three items deleted, three negative items deleted, score went up 14 points, okay? This was fantastic. And they showed, emailed in some stuff so I could see it and prove it and all this good stuff. And I got to see, only have a couple more derogatories left. Average age of the credit needs to be moved up, but that's going to get better over the next, you know, 12 months, 24 months. So that's going to be great. And those negative items that were once on there, hindering this individual from being able to get those primary lines, won't hinder them anymore. And they can have a higher rating. And we've talked about, and if this is your first session, maybe you've missed or whatnot, they'll be able to get the right mix, that right mix that people don't talk about. And I know you've heard me say it before, the credit card, the installment loan, and that Amex charge card. And Amex doesn't want to see all these negatives and all that stuff, okay? Mr. Alan Johnson, best credit repair guy around. Thank you so much, Mr. Johnson. So this is where you can get to deletions. It happens. And we're going to talk about why no one can be verifying this stuff and why they're struggling, why they'd be struggling to verify stuff and how you can get these deletions. I got some other emails and proof of why people are, are, are creditors are struggling and why collectors are struggling and why we talk about the 623 method now and why we're doing 609 letters and why we're doing 1681 and 611 and all, all this stuff, collection, fail to collection, uh, validate collection letters, which we have right here, okay? So we're gonna get into all that, all right? We live, baby, that's right. All right, let's see. Can you challenge, this is a great question. Can you challenge, man, can you challenge an account that's 120 days late, but still with the original creditor? Yes. Yes. Uh, the reason you can, and this is why on the title of this, why no, why people be struggling to verify, 
is because a lot of the times, not only are they not documenting your lights, they're not maintaining the proper documentation for the account. A lot of times if you're paying on time, they'll goodwill adjust, they'll say they won't. Okay, people say, oh, they won't, and I sent a letter and they haven't done it and they're not gonna do it. I've seen it, they did the same thing to me over and over and over again. I had a bank, uh, credit card, updated. Student loan, updated. It's possible. So you can challenge it, okay? Now, if it's still open and you're using it, you want to go goodwill route first, then late payment dispute route, okay? That's the level of aggression, yeah? Now, Miss Rodriguez, thank you, Brandon. I followed you for a minute and my score has gone from 400 to 721. From 400, wow, congratulations, that's, that's big. Wow, congratulations. Yes, yeah, someone else, Queen of Spades said, congratulations, Deanna. That is phenomenal. Fantastic work. Fantastic work. Wow. Ah, yes. So Nelly now, okay, you sent your second round of disputes letters, Capital One credit card, okay, student loans. Could they delete an open account? Okay, so if you're going right after the late payments, no, you're okay, right? You're just disputing the late payments, you're sending 609 letter disputing late payments, you're disputing, uh, sending a late payment dispute letter, which we have, you send goodwill letters, call, you can even call for goodwill, man, I even call for goodwill, okay? So no, you're okay. Uh, for the most part, you are fine. Unless you wanna completely remove, then you can be much more aggressive, you can ask for it to be removed. And, um, you know, some people have had stuff removed. Uh, typically, you're not utilizing it anymore after that point though. All right, so. This is what I'm getting, okay? Getting responses, getting responses in the emails, right? And um, this is very intriguing, okay? This is where we talk about going directly to the creditor. All right, so this is, this is what I'm gonna read to you, okay? Called an old creditor that was charged off of my credit report and they told me that they didn't have any more documentation, okay? They straight up told her, hey, we don't have any more documentation. And this individual said, like you said that they wouldn't, Brandon, okay? This individual was wanting to word the letter so that they can say that the, the collector has already deleted it from the collection, the, the collection's gone, okay? So this is why it's a little bit more complicated, but it says, can I word the letter that states about the third party, the collector, has deleted this information from my reports because, you know, she didn't want to call the third party, give them any information. I don't want to rattle any cages, right? So you don't have to deal with the third party anymore if it's deleted. So the third party couldn't verify it, right? Delete it. The creditor, the original creditor who charged it off, who says everything's with the collector, who couldn't verify it and deleted it. They said, oh, well, we don't have any documentation. Okay? It's over there. But they don't have it and it's deleted. So you don't have it, we don't have it, but the credit bureau says, yes, you charge off is here and verified, ha, through E-Oscar, e -Oscar? no, that's, we know that's not true. You went directly to them, they don't have it, okay? This is why people are just getting stitched up and they can't verify, right? Creditors, collectors, the bureaus. This is now three-pronged approach that we have, okay? I'm gonna talk more about this three-pronged approach. We have stuff to go directly to the creditors, 623. We've got, oh, look at that, Jera is live, live, live. Jara is now admin. She's at, uh, on here as well, doing some response as well. So that's cool. <laughs> Jimmy Hill, shout out Jerome holding strong today. Yeah, yeah, Jerome doing good, doing good so far. So we've got that three-pronged approach, okay? So directly to the creditors, 623, 609s to the credit bureaus, and you've got collection validation letters directly to collectors. we got three fronts that they got to investigate on, verify, and they have to do it within 30 days. That's why people are struggling to get verification. This is why th those people are struggling to get verification. That's why we're getting the deletions, right? That's why people's scores are going up, yeah? And right here, I got another response. I got a response from my collection companies, from B of A, Target Collection Company. They didn't provide any proof, okay? Then for the hospital one, they actually said something like the collection has been canceled and can, and can be handled with the original creditor. So now the collector, the collectors in this situation, right, with this original hospital bill, this collection, are backing off 
and they're saying, look, uh, we don't have anything. You go back to them. The creditor's saying, no, you go back to over there. They can't do it, right? They're, they're struggling, 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 all right? If they don't verify within 30 days, and this is great, you can send a non-response letter 30 days, which tells them that they need to delete this information. And we have those non-response letters in the Beyond Committed Package at 609creditrepair.com, or we can do the work for you at theawesomelifegroup.com. People, these are your rights, and they don't want to deal with people who understand the law. Okay, and I'm gonna read to you. I'm gonna I'm pull this up. Now that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to the non-response letters. So you can take a look and hear what they are so you understand if they don't respond within 30 days. And this is a big deal because let me tell you something what the violation is and what it is if they fail to respond within 30 days of a written notice. It's $1,000 for the Fair Credit Reporting Act Section 611. Okay, you can take them right to court. But hey, you probably don't want to have to do that, right? You want to send a letter and just have things delete and go away. Now, if they don't, okay, now if they don't, you can take them to court, all right? I'm going to close the copy of the letter that I mailed to your company via certified mail requesting that you verify the alleged debts, okay? The unverified, unverified accounts, right? Tracking number was X, Y, Z, right? You know, whatever the tracking was and when it was delivered and it goes on and so forth. Please send me a copy of my updated credit reports as soon as the above has been completed, all right? So you're asking them to delete the stuff and you let them know, you let them know. This is good. Okay, great. Great question. Okay. So people move during the credit repair process. They do, right? They're moving before, after, during, whatever, right? This happens often. People are ready to start a new life. They're ready to get their homes or ready to get their cars. So they're moving. I sent my first round of letters, but then I moved a month later. Should I send my second round with my new address or will that give them more of a reason to say they can't verify it's me? Okay. No, it will not give them more of a reason to say, hey, we don't know who you are because we have update address letters and to remove old addresses, they by law have to update to 100% accurate information. So if you start getting mail there, it's going to update there. Okay. You want to update your ID. You want to update, get those utilities in your name or whatever it is that you can, your cell phone bill, bank statement, whatever. Right. So they know this is this person. The old person with old address and old aliases, it gives them more of a reason not to be able to verify old accounts, okay? You're going to be known and be able to be verified. They won't be able to necessarily verify old accounts that might not necessarily be yours, okay? So I think it's always great. It's very interesting. People who move tend to be able to do some more repair. It's another strategy, right? I'm not saying that's what you need to do, but... Hey, look at this. Midland is soft pulling my credit without permission. Okay. No collection with them. Freaking out. Okay. Don't worry about that. Right. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Didn't affect your score. Midland does do that. I've seen it on reports. Reports. I've seen it. Soft pull. If it had been a hard pull, I would have gone to court, but I just didn't have the time. Didn't have the, 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 I just did not want to have to deal with that. Right. So they didn't mess with it. And I keep looking and there's nothing. They could be looking for easy money, right? They could be like, oh, let's see what's on this person's report. If there's any charge offs, if there's anything that we can go and buy. Oh, well, you know, we sell this person as charge offs. Let, let us go out there and reach out and get that person's information from the creditor that's charged off. Let's see who's handling that. Because, you know, some people will be like, well, I have some charge offs, but it hasn't hit collections yet. And I'm not really sure where these guys are trying to be quote unquote proactive and make money. It's ridiculous. Somebody saw K Kim, Mr. West Brooks. Thank you very much. Do you have a question here? Let's see. What about faxing your disputes? Can you do that? Okay, so let me talk about faxing disputes. Let me get into it, Mr. West Brooks. Okay, I appreciate you with the super chat. 
Can you do it? The short answer is yes. Do I advise you do it? No, I don't think you want to be faxing in your disputes. So we have seen what happens. Phone number will get blocked after a period of time. You know how many faxes they get? You know how many faxes? Go. Faxes they get. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'll address that next question. Uh, how many faxes they get? They block numbers after a period of time. Also, what proof do you have? You have a, you get a confirmation that you faxed in, confirms, right? But that doesn't mean that they get it. It just means you've sent it in, you know? The certified means they get it. So that's why you send it through the mail, a government service, certified mail. Okay, you can even get that return receipt if you are so inclined, want to be highly motivated, and they have to respond within 30 days from written notice. And that's what's interesting about failing to respond to your written disputes. That was not a fine, right? Okay. A facsimile, a copy, which is fine. If they get it, it's just harder to prove. And you can get blocked. And it can get lost. And maybe they don't get it all, right? Send the certified letter. But if you want to go about doing that, you can, but I just do not advise it. It's similar to doing stuff online. Okay. Raymen emailed you guys. Okay. Raymond, I want to make sure that you have good email. Sometimes people at, uh, okay. this is my email. Team at gmail.com. Okay. Email. Take care of this. Okay. Cool. 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 Nice. I got the beyond committed and it's fire. Thank you. Ah, so viewing your results online. Viewing your results online. Okay. Yes, Mr. Westbrook, you're very welcome. Viewing your results online. Do you do it? I look. <laughs> Secrets. Give me tight, Jerome. All right. We're going to get in. We get tight. Okay. I did it once. Okay. I did it once. I did it. I did it. Okay. I've done it before. All right. Now, actually, I uh, was doing it because I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. And I would prefer to get everything in the mail now. And I would encourage you guys to get everything in the mail now. Why? Because I don't have that login information anymore. I don't know what happened to that stuff. I wish I had it. Um, and to maintain those documents, the chances, oh, you, know, you can put it out, put it in a folder and all that stuff, maintain it. Also, I don't know what those user terms and agreements are anymore. Okay, so, you know, I did this a while ago, repair my own credit. But nowadays, you're going to have to check those user agreements. They might do force arbitration. You might be giving up rights. Be very cautious about that. Very, very cautious. Okay, so I would not, I would also not encourage that. Can you freeze the three credit bureaus during your first round of disputes to prevent creditors from verifying your information? You can freeze all of your bureaus, okay? You can freeze the three main bureaus. You can dispute, all right? During the dispute process, they're going to have to look at the stuff that they've got from creditors, and they're going to have to give that to the credit bureaus. You can freeze LexisNexis, CoreLogic, ARS, AgeStream, MicroBuild, MIB, the smaller bureaus, and keep them from being able to help the bigger bureaus from verifying, okay? That's what you can do. Right. Cool. And make sure when the response, they have 30 days from when they get the response to postmark you a response. Okay. Ah, Karen. Okay. So you're interested in the awesome life group doing the work for you. The awesome life group.com. The awesome life group.com. That's where you're able to have us and our team do it for you. Okay. 609 credit repair.com is the do it yourself side, which comes with email support. Cool. All right, all right. So when people aren't able 
to verify stuff, right? So the collector's saying it's the creditor, the creditor's saying it's the collector, the creditor is saying, well, we're getting information from there when they're actually using eOscar, okay? You can send something directly to the credit bureaus when the collection agency fails to verify. So we were talking a little bit earlier, we are just coming in now or watching the replay, or if you recall, an individual had a collector, B of A and Target, and just got statements, which isn't full verification, okay? So you can send this letter directly to the credit bureaus and say, write and dispute the above reference account. I've disputed this account information as inaccurate and unverifiable with you and have come back to me and say that I was able to verify it. How is this possible? Okay, under the laws of the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, I've contacted the collection agency myself and have been unable to verify that this is indeed my debt. It goes on and so forth and so on. Da -da 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 -da. I prefer not to litigate, but I will use the courts to enforce my rights, so forth and so on. You got that, right? Beyond committed package. So that is a very, very strong indicator to them. When you start saying $1,000 fine, you start saying course, litigation, courts, excuse me, course, courts, litigation, suits, this flags in their system. Okay, they know, that's why this stuff is worded this way. This is why these letters are worded this way, okay? So does freezing the three credit bureaus stop them from using their EOSCAR system, their ability to scan? Not really, okay, not really. And again, we've, we've talked about why EOSCAR is actually their own enemy and a friend of ours, and they think it's their friend. Because when they use EOSCAR and they try to auto verify stuff, they're violating your rights, okay? They're violating your rights. And you go ahead and play their game by their rules and they lose. It's a fascinating system because we have a letter and I'll read it to you right now, okay? I'll read this to you right now about Yasker and why Cushman versus TransUnion, Stephens, St Stevenson versus TransUnion, Richardson versus Equifax, okay? These are court cases, rulings and case, case law, okay? Precedent, precedent, what they call it, okay? Ruled each time and every time that this credit reporting agency, CRAs, couldn't merely parrot information from the creditors or collection agencies and that they have to conduct an independent, reasonable investigation to ensure the validity, valid, validity, excuse me, validity of the debt and the honesty of the creditor, the collector, whomever the furnisher is, right? Sending out generic forms Sending out, here's the thing, sending out generic forms through the eOscar system does not, does not constitute a reasonable investigation, okay? The eOscar system does not contain reasons for your disputes, all right? It's very common that you get a form letter, right? You just get something, oh, verified. It doesn't say, okay. So you asked this, we investigated this, this person said this on this date, and this is why. And this is the contract we have. No, they're pairing through eOscar. It's all electronic. And people have to pay for eOscar. Collectors, creditors, they pay for that system. All right? So don't sweat. We got that covered. We got those eOscar challenge letters. Yes, you can freeze check systems. You can also freeze LexisNexis, which will shut down uh, check systems. Yeah, they'll freeze up check systems too. Ah. All right. All right, Jerome, tighten up. Tighten it up, Jerome. Come on. Here we go. That's right. So a lot of people know about Cushman versus TransUnion, but we've got some other case laws that we're talking about. Man, this is chips and secrets and tricks, man. You ain't gonna get nowhere else. You ain't get nowhere else, right? So if you're watching the replay, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for notification. If you're watching right now, you wanna build your credit, man, okay? You gonna hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications, okay? Now, Jarrah, the moderator, and also a phenomenal business partner, great friend, She's at VidCon right now, doing the YouTube thing. So we're trying to knock this stuff out together. 
right? So I've been busy. I've been working, working two jobs, okay? Doing her job, doing Jerome's job, working an awesome life, helping people get their credit straight, talking to clients late at night. I was up late working, doing emails. So I apologize for my appearance, my hair, my shell. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it tight, okay? I'm gonna get it together. All right, car company refused to put correct amount owed through bureaus, okay? Not okay, not 100% accurate. They don't have to report an amount, but if they report an amount, it must be 100% accurate. That's a violation, okay? They don't have to have a amount. They don't have to have reporting. They don't have to have negatives, positives. It could be non-reporting, null, nothing, right? But it cannot be inaccurate. Not acceptable. Anthony sent out first round letter. Congratulations. What's the deal with early warnings, man? Okay. Early warnings is like a check system. If you're in there, you can dispute them. We have an early warnings letter. It's very similar to check systems. Um, they have to abide by FACTA, Fair Credit Reporting Act. FACTA really runs a lot of the, uh, the roosts for the check systems and the early warnings and the banking uh, sector. Okay. Oh, man, you, I saw this question. Somebody emailed me this, and now I see it here, and I meant to bring this up. It says, thanks for the live stream. Student loan, Navient, and the Department of Education sent someone else's signature for this person's loan. Okay, I don't know if you see this here. Someone else's signature for this person. Are you? This is wild. This happened to somebody else. I don't know if you've seen my video, but somebody else asked for verification for their hospital bill and got someone else's signature with no HIPAA. This is the silly stuff that happens. This is why you ask for verification. This is why they need to present this stuff because half the time they don't have it. The other half the time, it's somebody else's. The other half the time, they know they're not supposed to be reporting it. The other half the time, they're not supposed to be licensed. That's like four halves, all right? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of it. I'm sorry that happened to you. But if they're sending you the wrong stuff, you know that's a violation. Yeah, you let them know. You send this stuff in. You can send it to the AG. You can send it to the CFPB, okay? You can take them to court. It's simple. Get that stuff done. Just uh, discharge. Done with it. You know. I, I'm sorry that happened to you. It sucks. It's really unfortunate. Dismissed, Corla. We've got those dismissed bankruptcy letters. All right. No, I think we've discussed these dismissed bankruptcy letters before with you. I I definitely hope that you got them. Okay. I'm gonna talk about dismissed BK real quick. I know everybody salivating. For their questions, but just remember, dismiss bankruptcies and a lot like bankruptcies, they use the PACER system. And you say, for a fact, your company uses PACER system for information on bankruptcies. PACER system is inaccurate, it's incomplete, okay? Doesn't provide everything that they need, like full socials. Under Fair Credit Reporting Act, Section 1681, you need to delete this, okay? You need to delete it. Delete it, delete it, delete it. Send me updated report. We've got that beyond committed package. And thank you so much for the thumbs up. I appreciate the love. <laughs> uh, CRA is straight up say EOSCA uses. Yeah, that's right. But we know the case law, they're not allowed to just parrot what they get from EOSCA. It's fine. All right. And if you see me scrolling, if you see me doing anything, occasionally we get a few individuals who will um, send beyond committed package. You get it at 609creditpair.com. 609creditpair.com. Ah, I sent your first round through Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Is that okay? It is best to send your letters directly to the bureaus, and then you can send a copy, a copy through the CFPB, and you can dispute through there as well. So now you got the CFPB to dispute through, directly to the credit bureaus, directly to the collectors, directly to the creditors. I mean, you got four. You just you start to put pressure on them, and that's what they do to you. That's what they've done to us, right? They call, they send letters, they use your credit report as leverage. They they call they call family members, they call your office, they call, they do all sorts of stuff, right? They threaten suits. This is what they do. That's why we do it the other way and we put all that pressure on them. We use the AG, the CFPB, the FTC, the Better Business Bureau, the collectors, the creditors, the credit. It gets me excited. It gets me pumped up. I got up this morning, got pumped up. I got my my uh my uh, rock music going. Cool. 
Let's see what else we got. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. This is great. This is a good question, man. So you've talked to other people, other repair companies, all this stuff. They say it gets harder as you challenge. Okay. It gets harder as you challenge. This is not necessarily the case. And it's a perception. It's a human perception of how we think of things. Okay. You might get a few things off here, a few things off there, not later. Then you get a few things off later and not, and then later and then not, right? It's a flow. There's fluctuations. You ever see a stock market? It goes up like this, right? Okay. Your life, your everything. Oh, you had a great experience. And then uh, it's just a little slow. And then, oh my God, we went skydiving. And then went, right? It's the same idea. So they're telling you, oh, it gets harder. They're not understanding this part. It's just part of the process. I had people come to me from other places who have already done rounds of letters who they were like, oh, I can't get anything off. We start sending letters. It's like, eh, and then boom, 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 boom. It's not always the case. It is possible you can do it and it gets easier because you're building your case. So the violations start to mount up. So you're like, well, you know, round two, you said your method of verification was this, but it couldn't have been because we went to the collector, we went to the creditor, right? So if you know what you're doing and you know what violations you're doing and what how they're violating your rights, it gets easier and easier and easier and easier. What becomes more quote unquote challenging is getting them to do their job, right? They don't want to do their job. That's not not here they're now. We just start. We we have used the attorney general before office before, the CFPB, the better, the FTC. We've seen repossessions come off that way. We've seen bankruptcies come off. We've seen these things come off. Yeah. So if you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing, you know? So I, I think you'd be fine. You could do it yourself, 609credit.com. We've got the email support. I teach you how to do it. Teach you how to do it here. We've got the, the awesome life group to do it for you. Okay. Yes, so you're asking, is that only for dismissed BKs? No, they use the PACER system for bankruptcy, but with the dismissed bankruptcy language, it's dismissed because they weren't able to verify it in the court. Something dismissed isn't verified. It's like saying, hey, they took me to court, it was dismissed, charges dropped. Okay, well then there's nothing on your record. They're not supposed to be able to report it. So there's some extra special language, it's actually not supposed to be there. I don't know why they started doing that. Uh, the seven dispute through Lexus Nexus. Uh, we've gone through a lot of that before, and I'll come back to the seven. Yes. Okay. So we we go to house. Okay, we go to house of the seven five seven. I'm guessing you're in the real estate market. Uh, you you did not you did not dispute this account, but Experian messed up, deleted it all positive account, right? It's not so great, but all you have to do is ask them to put it back on, ask the creditor to put it back on, find out what their stuff was. If you have a report showing it, send it in, circle it, you can call. And if they don't, guess what you can do? For defamation of character, for uh, damages. Okay, this is straight up damages. And this is why I, I talk to lawyers and I talk to the legal industry, and of course I'm not an attorney. I'm starting to learn more though, but those are damages. And when you start dealing with damages, that could affect your, right? Your loans, your APR, your all that stuff. So you can clearly say, hey, you should be able to get a loan here. Then I can get a loan here. A thousand dollars, it's even more than a thousand dollars. It's per what the court deems. It's what the court, your damages, you're, you're getting set over a thousand. Extent of damages incurred by you, the wrong party deemed by the court. It could be unlimited. And I'm not saying it's unlimited. I'm not saying, it be, you know, but if you can't get a million dollar home, if you can't get your, I don't know what kind of car you're going to get, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollar car. Okay. Uh, good APR for that. If you can't get your business lines now, if you can't start your million, million dollar company, do you see what I'm saying? I don't know. We go to houses and you can do real estate. You can't start your billion dollar real estate company. Yeah. That could be big, bad news. So what they're going to do is they'll track it down and they'll put it back on. Why not? It's easy. It's easier than than having to deal with the paint paint on stuff, right? So you're gonna be okay. And then thank you very much for the super chat. All righty. 
against you in San Leonardo. I was going to specific reason to speak. After <laughs> <laughs> okay, TransUnion sent a letter saying, give me a specific reason to dispute after I sent the six and nine. Yeah, they'll play games. They'll say, oh, well, you know, your dispute wasn't specific, or we don't know why you want to dispute, or Capital One, or some other credit card company. So we don't know what your dispute is. They know what it is. You're asking for verification. They know what it is. They're playing games. And you send the next round, and you say, well, okay, okay. Maybe you don't understand. I want to know. I want you to verify this and I want to know your method of verification, okay? It's very simple. And that's your right. It doesn't, and that's what's interesting. It's not about if they do what they want you to do, right? It's not about, okay, well, we don't know what you're specific. No, I'm disputing, that's my right. It's verify, verify it. If you don't do that, you're in violation. It doesn't matter if it's like, oh, we don't want to verify it, right? We don't, we don't, we want a different reason. Because that's what they do online. They have different reasons. So these guys, man, they'll do everything not to try and just to, just to say, look, we don't have anything. You go to the, this is interesting. Like we started this before. If you're just coming in and you're watching the replay, if you talk to the creditor, they'll say, oh, we don't have anything. Sorry. They just straight up tell you. Okay, so you're with another credit repair company. You're interested in coming aboard here. We usually do a waiting period about 30 days just because we're not sure what they sent out. We wanna make sure everything trickles back in. So from when you stop about 30 days, right? About a, about a month, just because we there's no way to tell what disputes are sent out. Even if they tell you and you say this and that, we need time for things to clear out and so we can see what's in and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, cool. Yeah, email for sure. You can email me. And uh, I'm going through emails. I just want to make sure that you have my good email. Okay. Because sometimes people add an R to it and there's no R on it. Okay, okay good question. What about if I'm with, so you're Golden Line with a credit repair company, but wanted to do uh, this stuff with the creditor action only? Okay, so you need to talk to your credit repair company and ask them, okay? Because I can't say they're not doing that. Maybe they're doing that, maybe they aren't, maybe they've got a specific plan for you, maybe it's mapped out, maybe they've got their charts. Because in our offices, we have our charts, we've got the flow, we know what's going on. We're like, okay, this happens, this happens, this happens, that happens, we know what's going on, right? So I don't wanna give you some information that isn't useful to you and helpful in your situation. Also, if you're disputing things, I don't want them to say, well, we sent letters out for you to them and now you're sending letters and now, now it's messing stuff up. So, so be very cautious and talk to them. But if they're not, yeah, you potentially could. Okay. <laughs> creditors, creditors are failing to verify, but they're threatening to see. Well, this is interesting. So once you get them to back down, because they're they're scared, right? They're 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 operating out of fear too. Okay. So on this side, we get a little scared. We're like, oh no, is this stuff gonna come off. It's gonna come off, right? And they're threatening. If they were going to do it, they would have sent you something that said, this is this is the contract, okay? Because I've seen it. I've seen it with my own two eyes, okay? Contract, signature, the dates that stuff was charged, date stuff was paid. I see, because I, I had to do a pay for delete one time, right? One, one, one time, one credit, one, one, one. It wasn't that bad. Everything else was deleted and removed, okay? Even was sued and they dropped, they dismissed the case because they had no proof. They would just send it and they would say, hey, you need to make arrangements, this is it. And if not, we'll just call you to court, okay? And it was, uh, it was, I think it was for so little that they didn't wanna go to court anyway. So I think that's why they agreed with the paper delay. I made it very generous, you know, I would, they were salivating over that money. But the big thing about, pardon me, getting, got ALG people, the team, team will pick it up, okay? The big thing about that is they're just threatening. It's all threats. And if something happens, you know the rules of the game when you go to court. You know, 
You have to ask, you got to provide proof. The burden of proof is on them. Yes, so you received an email from Lending Club telling you that your account was sold to Velocity. Should you dispute Lending Club charge off? Yes. Dispute the, ven the lending, <laughs> lending, lending club charge off. And Velocity, if it's not in your reports yet, get ready to send validation letters to them if it pops up, okay? Use third-party service, but can't be accurate. Right. Did the first round letters, uh, they said they don't verify with the court, okay, or, but they use a uh, third-party service. Okay, yeah. Really, like Pacer or LexisNexis. But third parties, this is what we talk about. Third parties, not so good, right? Third parties, no bueno. You've got to be the original furnisher of that information. And I've seen people actually send in their bankruptcy letter from the bankruptcy court where it'll say like, oh, we do not provide information to third parties like credit bureaus and things like that. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting situation. The funny thing about once you repair credit is you wanna keep your credit score high, right? But you wanna be able to utilize your credit. This is why the consumer credit side is crazy. Because every time you get a credit card, you get a hard inquiry. So it says, hey, Brandon, once your credit has been repaired, how often do you recommend applying for credit cards without hard inquiries affecting your score? Well, unfortunately, even with good credit, a hard inquiry is going to affect your score. Something that I come to terms with, right? It depends how good your score is, where you're going, what you're doing, what you need. Okay. Let your score heal if you need to repair it. So if you have really good credit, it's up in the, let's just say hypothetically, it's up in the 800s. You could apply for a credit card and your score will go down by five points or something, seven points, okay? Still above 760. The specific above level is 760. 760 and above, you are prime time player. Okay, I know that sounds wild, 760 and above. 720, is really good too, 720 and above is really good. What happens is if you apply for a couple of cards, it's gonna drop, right? 715, 710, no, no problem, still good. So let it rebound and just watch it okay, every couple of months. So every few months you might be able to apply. Okay, as long as you don't apply for a bunch all at once, you're not gonna crash your score. And you probably only need to get one card, maybe two cards. You wanna get up to a lot of available credit. Turn out, let me see. Let's see what Tarnell will uh, correct you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's see what Tarnell says. Cool. Good. Y'all helping each other. I appreciate y'all. Y'all see, I got no, no haircut, right? Y'all answering questions for one another. It's fantastic. I appreciate you. Right. So about to send you around three letters. Credit collection agencies, just parroting Eoska. They're not verifying. Make sure. Send the collection agency fails to verify information directly to the credit bureaus. Okay, it frustrates them to no end to know that you uh, got that information from the collector as well. All right, let's see what we got. How many cards is he? Different types. Cool, you know, this is interesting. 12 is a big number that I've heard and used and utilized and heard, and it's about available credit too. So Amex is interesting. You can get a lot of different cards, but they will fluctuate the, your available credit through different cards, yeah? You know? So cards are interesting. Different types of cards are important, of course. We talk about credit card, installment loans, and then the charge card, the Amex, okay? What's important is you being able to manage credit, okay? So if you've got 10K or 100K, you being able to use a little bit on each card. I've seen the difference, okay? I've seen the difference. One time I stopped using a credit card for a period of time. I'm like, man, I don't wanna use this card for a while. And credit score dropped, okay? Started using a little bit, credit score went up. I'm like, how is that possible, FICO? How is that possible? 
How are you going to penalize me for keeping my credit score, my credit so clean, not using it? How are you going to penalize me, man? But they do. They want to see that you're managing just a little bit, just a little bit here and there, right? So having 12 cards is great, but you got to be able to manage the three, four, five, or six, or eight that you're using, right? Manage, yeah, under the two, three percent, just a little bit, a little bit, okay? Maybe you have 20 cards. Some people have 20 cards. Some people have five cards and get really good high credit, six cards. What I'm seeing in the high earners and the highest FICO is about 12. And it's, it's just strange. It's just the way that the available credit is. Yes, so the name is spelled wrong on my credit report. Can I dispute accounts since that is considered inaccurate? Yes. So your name is wrong, so it should be attached to wrong names on the accounts. So someone similar to me or mistaken identity could be a reason. Could be a reason. Could be a reason. I'm just saying it could be a reason. Okay. I'm not saying that's what you're going to do. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. I'm saying it could be a reason. Yes. So someone similar to you, someone similar name, we don't know. That's the whole reason we ask for verification. That's the whole reason we do what we do. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I have USA, USAA. Hey, man, USAA. I got, got some USA too. Charge cards and credit cards are different. Yes. A charge card, you have to pay the balance off at the end of their cycle. So... It's usually 30 days, but what happens is some things that get charged, you know, like at the end of the, let's say you charge something on the 30th, that thing that you charge on the 30th isn't necessarily going to be charged uh, on the first. Okay. It's not necessarily right. That might be in the next billing cycle and they'll, they'll kind of show and break it down for you. But yes, it's a, uh, yeah, close end accounts, right? So boom, 30 days. The reason this mix, pardon my, the pen there. The reason they like this mix is think about it. You have somebody charging something up every 30 days and paying it off in full. You know that they're paying off. And the amount that you utilize allows you to extend your purchasing power. <laughs> Michelle. All right, Michelle. Hate to stalk you. No problem. I see it. Uh, I'll give you my email. And uh, you can email me. And uh, you can sign up for services. All right. If you're interested in signing up for services, Michelle. That's theawesomelifegroup.com, theawesomelifegroup.com, okay. Yes, missed monthly payments. So my business partner had some unverified late payments, even on student loans, and asked them to verify those late payments on the student loans. And when that happened, she was like, hey, you know what? If I was, if I missed some payments, please show me. If not, please delete them. They deleted them. It took some time, but you deleted it. So yes, you absolutely can. Okay, so after sending the, the letters, your dispute letters, you have to wait to do my address, personal information. Can I do it now? Usually it's just a little bit in between, right? So you've sent your letters, you can do it. Usually give about mm, two weeks difference timetable, about two weeks, that's it, that's it, that's it. So they, you send something in to dispute, update personal and profile information, you're okay to do it. Eh, about two weeks difference. It's not the same. They're not, they won't come back and say, oh, we got a different dispute. It's not quite a dispute. It's an update to your personal profile information. It's different. What is this, Joseph, closing your USA membership, closing your account? I missed that. Why are you closing your account? USA closed my credit card account uh, with good payment history and a 3K balance without notice, any advice. Man, call them. I, you know what's interesting is I had a charge off with them and they, I don't know, I don't know what they did. I didn't even remember, maybe it was a charge off. It was, it was pretty delinquent and they were calling it. They opened a new card and moved that uh, credit history over for me. It was wild. So USA is interesting because they're for service members. Thank you for your service. Uh, appreciate you. Give them a ring, call, and if they close it for no reason, maybe not being active or something like that, I need to be using my USAA card. I mean, use my USA card, so maybe maybe ask them. But uh, that that's what I would do. They're oh man, yeah, I like USA chance. Yeah, they're very lenient. I, they're very lenient. Mail to you. Cool. All right. Excellent. If you email me, I will be getting back. 
CPU, no problem, okay? Not a problem. Just finishing up some emails, clients, you know, doing the, can't even get my hair cut, doing the live chat, so I'll definitely get back to you. I have a card through them, yeah. Okay, let's see what we got. Her Navy Fed was better. Navy Fed might be better, yeah. All right, so we're about to get into these late payments. Then I'm going to let y'all enjoy y'all Saturdays, okay? I know we, we've gone over a lot today. Thank you so much for subscribing, being a part of the Subscribe Tribe, and being able to, you know, come on during a Saturday afternoon. I appreciate you. So it's late payments. Uh, can I dispute late payment? Have, uh, need some advice. Okay, so we have a specific late payment dispute letter, which tends to do really good. Also... On your 609 letters, put unverified late payments, and you can ask for the same late payments through the creditor with that 623 method. They have to verify late payments. They have to show, look, on their system, they have a date when you're supposed to pay, and they have to show when you paid or when you didn't pay. They have to provide that. I've yet to see that. I've yet to see that. Yet to see that, okay? Yet to perhaps someone do this, okay? So let's see what we got here. Late payment dispute. I know some of y'all probably wondering, what is what is going on? He's talking about this late payment. So you can list your late payments, okay? The listed account is being 30 days late, 60 days, 90 days, whatever it is. I was never late on this account, okay? Or this account was listed 30 days, 40 days, 50 days late. It's an unverified late payment. Please verify this as you have not provided me any proof that this account was ever late if it was late please if it was excuse me if it was late um and, and this is if you want to send it directly to the credit the creditor if i was late understand right if i was never late please delete immediately right so you're not actually putting hey if i was ever late it's all good you're actually putting if i was never late please delete immediately right but the sentiment is the sentiment is what i'm saying is like hey look hey man if it was late hey but just let me know. It's the same thing with all this stuff. It's the same thing, okay? They have to prove it. They've got to prove it, all right? So let me see here. One more. What if, they, what if business credit information is supposed to provide us today? <laughs> yeah, Dallas, thanks for remi reminding me. Okay, so um, business credits all right no personal guarantee business credit so i want you to have an understanding and foundation of business credit yes so you start with your vendor accounts right what's very important is that if you're going to get business credit with no personal guarantee okay you want to be able to pay the vendors Okay. Each vendor uses about 25, 50 bucks to pay them. You, that's what you need to utilize. Just like we were talking about earlier, utilizing the credit a little bit. It's the same thing. They want to see that you're utilizing these vendors. Okay. So no personal guarantee, same deal. Okay. You got to be using those vendors. So if you're going to get Granger, Uline, um, man, Granger, Uline, Pitney Bowes, um, we use Quill, Tiger Direct. Trying to think what else you might be able to use i'm thinking of what we utilize if you want to get the store cards the dells the uh, walmarts the apples the um, costco's the amazons amazon has both a charge card a credit card and a net 55 so they're both vendor and store if you want to do that you got to be using the vendor boom 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 got to use them bam 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 okay you need to get five to post you can move up it's about two to three months and two to three months Okay, about three months, three months. Okay, so you get those store cards. Now, with your corps, your LLCs, okay, try not to do this uh, as a sole prop because then it won't work. They get intertwined. Corps, LLCs, okay, you want to be able to, you want to be able to have a business that appears to have growth big, right? So you need the virtual office or the real office. You got to be listed in 411. You can do list yourself for free, okay? You gotta have that business email, the website, Google My Business, you put yourself on Google My Business, Yahoo My Business. Uh, you want to get into, uh, I'm trying to think of the emails, uh, da, da. 
Da, good, good, good. Okay, great. Now, oh, yellow, yellow pages, yellow pages. You want to get into yellow pages, sorry. So you need to appear, right? The other thing is age. Age is an appearance too of being large, right? So some store cards want two years. They say, oh, you got to be two years, two years, two years, two years. Some don't, okay? Some do not. You want to look at what you need, what you can utilize, because you got to use them, and that works for your corp. All right. If you want an older corp, you could always get a shelf corp. That's more a little bit more complicated. Okay. What you do is you find an older corporation out there that you purchase from the Secretary of State, whichever state you're doing business in and want to do business in. Get it from that Secretary of State. Make sure there's no outstanding fees and liens and taxes and all that stuff. Right. That's why I don't really go for that because it could be st outstanding stuff. And some of those shelf corps already have their business credit. Once you get to a certain level, you can get on no, you know, no, no personal guarantee. Visas, MasterCards, and American Expresses, okay? So that's the idea in a nutshell of what you can do for your business credit, all right? Office Max. Office Max has store cards too. And so does Staples. Excellent. HIPAA. Great. And also, okay, so last thing before I let y'all let y'all get on with your Saturday. So medical. So people are not getting HIPAA signed release forms back, but they're getting stuff, right? HHS, guys, we've talked about it before. HHS.gov, Office of Civil Rights. You can file your HIPAA dispute. HIPAA. Excellent. Went over a lot today. I appreciate you. I want you to be able to take this with you, run with it at 609creditpair.com if you want to do it yourself. Or if you prefer us to do it, you've watched the live feed, okay? You've watched this or you watched the replay and you think maybe I'll just have Brandon and his team do it, theawesomelifegroup.com. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to sign off here very shortly, all right? I want you to have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy. Sometimes... We take things very seriously. I take things, you know, real seriously, get really into the credit repair and we want to repair our credit, but also take time for yourself and enjoy your friends, your family. You guys are amazing. I uh, really, really do enjoy you. Love you guys all so much. 60,000 subscribe tribe strong. So that's you guys helping one another. I'm seeing you guys in the comments helping one another as well. So thank you. And again, if I didn't get to your question today, we have more live streams to come. We have my email address right here. Okay. Thanks. Easy peace. Peace. Uh, we go to, that's where we go. We got, we got houses. 757. That's right. We got houses. Appreciate you too. Terry, Trey, excuse me, Mr. Trey Barry. That's a great name. Appreciate you. Core pump, subscribe channel. It's got that pumped arm. Appreciate it. Uh, we got how yes, yeah, so we get we have houses, many houses. Great. So peace. Appreciate you. All right, guys. So thank you so much again. And until I see you in person, guys, you know where I'll see you. I will see you. Thank you. Oh, peace, peace is Drew. Peace out. Um, thank you. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay, my peace. See you on the other side. Yes, K. K. Wilkerson. Waving, thank you so much. Bye. Queen of Spades, I appreciate you. I see a lot of people here that I've seen before, so thank you so much. I appreciate you. Christine Parrish, man, Ms. Parrish, I've seen you. hoo shit, hoo <laughs> uh, Harriet Smiles, thanks. I'll tell Jerome, Pete, Jerome, say hi. Deuces, all right. Take care, guys. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And if you need – okay, so you got my email. You got the website. You got that. You got the good stuff. The, um, time. So you all have it. And CFPB, if you need to file complaints. And uh, my email. Okay. All right. Remember – Dispute those charge-offs, dispute those collections, dispute the negative items, the late payments. We got that. I got your email thing. Okay. Uh, dispute the late payments, the foreclosures. You can get the business credit. You can get 
the authorized user trade lines to boost your score, okay? We have BKs, that's right, we've talked about BKs, all right, yes. BKs, remember guys, Pacer, dispute with LexisNexis, okay? Dispute the negative stuff out of LexisNexis, freeze up LexisNexis, dispute, send a letter to the courthouse asking if they send stuff to third parties, they don't, send that in as your supporting documentation. I have lots of BK letters uh, in this 609 credit repair packages, the Beyond Committed package. We've got the BK videos here for you to do as well. That We've got excellent sources here. Got my email. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all. All right. 60,000 strong. Thank you so much. And until I see you in person, I will see you on the other side. Take care.